T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, main engine start, 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia to broaden our view of the universe through the Hubble Space Telescope. Roll program. Roger roll, Columbia. Uh, some things are better left unspoken. Uh, eight and a half minutes later, we were in orbit. Then uh, it's time to get the orbiter ready, unpack everything that was packed away for the launch, and get prepared for flight day three, which was the rendezvous with the Hubble Space Telescope. We rendezvoused up from below, uh, came up till it was just hanging there, perched above the payload bay. This is a shot of the uh, flight deck during the rendezvous. You can see that uh, we're working there in Columbia. Rick Linehan was our handheld laser operator. That's what gave us our ranges to the telescope when we first looked out to see it. It really was uh, a beautiful sight to see that uh, hanging up there. Of course, flying the rendezvous is uh, hand-flown. Uh, Tim Hagen, our instructor who taught us everything we knew, was there with us in spirit as we uh, pulled up to the telescope. You can see it through the optical sight there. Then Nancy used the robotic arm to reach out and uh, snare the Hubble Space Telescope. That's her working on the aft flight deck controlling that arm. This is the view that she had as she was uh, pulling up and overflying the snares. And you can bet that uh, once we had that thing on board, there was a lot of happy campers, a big sense of relief as we had those handshakes. Well, of course, once we had the Hubble, our day wasn't over. We had an ambitious uh, evening of rolling up the solar arrays. On the first service mission, STS-61, they had to jettison one array, so we were very anxious uh, to see. It was kind of a pivotal moment as we rotate the telescope here. One solar array stowed, uh, still wondering what was going to happen with the second one, and we rolled up the second one. And we were very, very fortunate that both solar arrays uh, rolled up. That set the stage for the next day, the first of five spacewalks, extravehicular activities. And we've combined uh, the two solar array days because over the first three days, we replaced nearly the entire power system of Hubble. And we started that by stowing the old solar arrays, the Solar Array 2s. These are arrays built by the European Space Agency, one of the partners on the Hubble Space Telescope and also an integral partner in the International Space Station. This is a view from uh, one of the helmet cams. That was a very useful tool throughout the mission. And so you'll have the opportunity today to see some of the views that we had inside of the spacesuit. After removing those solar arrays from the telescope, uh, we brought them back down into the payload bay and stowed them on one of the carriers that we brought up with us in the payload bay. And uh, using the power tool, which you see there on the lower right, we were able to lock those down into the payload bay for a return to planet Earth. Of course, the spacecraft choreographer, the IV crew member, inside crew member, is integral to the, all of the operations and uh, runs the show for each EVA. After we... Uh got the uh, old solar arrays uh, on our carrier to take home. It was time to get the new solar arrays out. And uh, here's a view of how what we did. We got the solar arrays out of the carrier, and then we had to rotate them on the arm. Uh, Scooter alluded to that earlier. Uh, we weren't tethered to the solar array at this point. Uh, we didn't want to lose it, so we went really slow. And here's a view of the helmet camera. This is what we were looking at uh, as we rotated it, nice and slow. Uh, making sure we wouldn't uh, put any unnecessary input into it uh, and just being real careful. After we uh, finished with the rotation and got the mast of the new solar array pointed toward the telescope, it was time to uh, insert it into the telescope. There you can see the clamp and the mass of the, of the, uh, mass of the solar array going into the clamp on the telescope and uh, clamping it down. And there were a lot of watchful eyes on us while we were doing this. 
the uh, new solar arrays, unlike the old ones, uh, folded like a book. The old ones just sort of kind of reeled in. The uh, new ones unfolded like a book, and that's the last few degrees of the uh, of the deploy of the new solar array. And here's what Hubble looks like now with its new solar arrays. Digger was inside uh, busily uh, taping everything. He was kind of like our producer director, Steven Spielberg in space, <laughs> making sure everything got recorded and downlinked. Uh, after we uh, finished our solar array uh, on the second day of EVAs, Jim and I uh, changed out a reaction wheel assembly. This is the exchange of the old one for the new. Jim's got the old one, putting that away to take home. And here's the new one going into the telescope. We had some extra time on EVA2, and uh, at the end of the EVA, here's Jim carrying a new outer blanket layer that was put onto the telescope. And here's a view from, uh, from a helmet camera at the end of that EVA, and you get an idea of uh, what it looks like to us up there. And another helmet camera view. With the uh, stage set for the power system uh, on EVA3, we went out for what we thought was going to be the start of EVA3 and the power control unit change. Unfortunately, due to glitch in a power supply, the uh, water supply in one of the suits started leaking, and so we had about a two-hour delay while we resized the suits. They were designed to do that on orbit, and it's one of the great features that we were, had onboard spares. So I went out with uh, Jim's backpack, and we set out to turn off the telescope the first time in 12 years. That was a scene of the battery being disconnected. This is the power control unit. Uh, I think all of those connectors on the left side there kind of speak for themselves that it was a day to uh, manage frustration and concentrate on one connector at a time. Rick disconnected all the uh, connections on the left. We swapped the old box for the new. This is a photograph or a movie of going in with the new, out with the old, in with the new. And then the reverse, one by one, just one connector after another, uh, putting all those left side connectors back on. We had a special tool to help us do that. And 36 connectors later, the PCU was complete. Uh, one final picture of the telescope on EVA3, and we were ready to set the stage for the next day. Uh, Mike Massimino and I were going to go outside and put in the advanced camera for surveys. This is what uh, Sean was referring to, Mr. Keefe was referring to about the, uh, the new capability for the Hubble, and we're really looking forward to the first pictures that are going to come out. There's an old faint object camera that was no longer being used. First, uh, we took that out of the telescope and uh, temporarily stowed that on the side while the people in, indoors were keeping track and making sure we were doing the right things. The choreography for this part was such that Mike was going to then help me pull the old one out, and then we were going to bring it up and carefully insert it. It had a fairly small capture envelope, and here you see it coming up. But the Goddard Space Flight Center has done remarkable work in, in making some of these tasks almost EVA friendly. There's the big box going in now, and we were able to get it uh, hooked up, and there's Mike hooking up the connectors, and we found out fairly shortly that uh, it was alive and working. We then uh, put the old faint object camera away and got ready to do the cooling system. Okay, a picture of uh, Jim and Mike installing the cache, which is a large cable electronic connection that will reach across from inside the telescope to connect uh, both sides. And uh, in the back of the payload bay, Jim is down there now, about to take out a module called the ESM, which is one of the upgrade units uh, that's going to control the electronics uh, and routing for the different scientific instruments we're putting in. Scott's uh, on the arm today, flying them around. Uh, you can see him on the hand controllers as Jim passes the ESM up to Mike, who was on the end of the robot arm, stretched almost all the way out to the back end of the payload bay. Now, Jim, uh, after he hands off, uh, will be free-floating, making his way back up to the front of the telescope while Mike flies up. You can see the ESM, a uh, picture of his helmet camera right there, close up. They've got that installed, and they're beginning to replace the connectors on the ESM. They're hand connectors that go on and, uh, and, and latch on with your hand. Nice picture of Mike here as he free-floats and comes across. You can see the helmet lights and the cameras as well as Jim giving a thumbs up through the aft windows. Uh, flight crew is taking these pictures. And a really nice picture of Jim when they're complete. He's on his back there waving goodbye to the Earth uh, through the helmet cameras. Really pretty picture. Now we had to be electricians and plumbers.